frightening bards and bardettes, welcome back to iCast Vicious Mockery. I'm Austin. I'm Matt. Today we're going to scare the heck out of you. We're just going to scare the bejesus right out of you. Boo. Yep, hold on to your gooch. We're going sca- <laughs> to scare the undergunchies right off you. <laughs> hold on to your big toes, everybody. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to spoop you. Yeah. Like crazy. Hold on to your bones, guys, because woo, Ooh, bo- we're going to oh, rip man. your skeletal system out of your body. <laughs> and boy, oh boy, is that going to be scary. All right. So we got some homebrew today. Uh, I'm just I'm telling you, actually, Matt, I don't need to tell Matt this. Literally, we just talked about it. I'm telling you, but I have to look this way. <laughs> um, we got some homebrew. It's it's a little. A little spooky. It's a little spooky. <sighs> yeah, some of it is. We're feeling seasonal. Yeah. We're feeling seasonal. I guess technically this is going up after Halloween, so we missed our shot at the spoop, but like... Come on, you can still... You can dredge up an ounce of Halloween spirit yeah. before you put your red and green stockings on and put on your... And like, your turkeys, hat turkey bells. slippers and stuff. Right, because you got to have like a little Thanksgiving if you're in the U.S. Every store has Christmas stuff now, so ah, uh, dude, I know ha- Halloween is like gone. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, already. <laughs> All the Halloween music is going to be shut off and replaced with Christmas music. Yeah, Halloween is less; it's it's more than a week away, and it's already done. Yeah, I know. It's very sad. It does feel like that. It, yes. It does feel like everyone's like, all right, Halloween's good. We did that. Right. Which but is we, weird. But we didn't. Is it just because we're adults? I don't is know. Is it because we're not like kids going trick or treating and I, we don't have to wait until the 31st? Is that. Oh, man. Okay. I see. Well, yeah. Halloween is one of my favorite holidays. Um, but my favorite thing about Halloween is that you can like go to like a party somewhere and dress up in, in a costume and do that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I like that. I like I like do I like doing that. Almost like Halloween. Yeah. But um this year it just doesn't feel the same. For some reason. We should write a Halloween song about that. Okay. Um yeah. Halloween so Halloween is just not as spooky without you. I know October was the month where 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 we were dropping our uh homebrew book that we will start writing soon. Right. Since right, it's right. this month. I think we pushed it back to November. Oh, did we? Okay. I think we pushed it back. Uh, well, you know, what? I guess we should make an announcement today. Yeah. Uh, here's the official announcement. Mm-hmm. We are postponing <laughs> our homebrew book. Uh, if you pre-ordered it, you're going to get an email mm-hmm. that says the same thing that I'm saying now. Right. Which is, how did you do that? How did you pre-order this thing? We didn't, we don't have any pre-orders set up. But then you're going to be like, how did he do that? Yeah, yeah, because you didn't put your email into anything. It's freaking right, but I know who you are. Right, we know who you are. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to reach right through this camera. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the Halloween spirit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to... I know right. if you get candy or not or whatever. I'm going to reach right through this microphone and tickle your ears. He didn't do it. I thought he was going to do it. I thought that was a real one. <laughs> All right. I thought about it. The power's too too great. Yeah. Um, what, okay. what you got for us? Hey, here's an otherworldly patron. It comes to us from Bet No One Got This Name. That's the username. That's very clever. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm kind of mad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I messed that up. The user is, I bet no one got this name. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, now I need to get that name. Yeah. Now you got to, well, you got to find a platform where you can still get it. I got a really good name on RuneScape recently. Did you? Yeah. We'll talk about it another time. Cool. All right. So, um, this is a patron for warlocks. Oh. And uh, it's called The Omen. Mm. I'm not sure. Quite. By Schechter Guitar Research. Um, yeah, sure. Here's your expanded spell list. You, can, you get Bless and Bane, 
uh, aid, enhance ability, clairvoyance, haste, arcane eye, freedom of movement, scrying, and legend lore. Which are not spells that warlocks usually get, but that's the spell list for this. You know, warlock subclasses all have their own. Can I see the list? Expanded spell list. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to get the through line here. All right, so we got. Hmm. Last main aid enhance ability. Points haste. All right, so there's a lot of uh utility spells. Yeah, utility. Uh huh. Uh, as well as it looks. Like, what does freedom of movement do? I forget. It makes it so that you cannot be grappled, restrained. Oh. Um. It, your your movement speed cannot be lowered. So it's like grease, but higher level. Much higher level. Freedom of movement is a crazy powerful spell. Actually, it's only fourth level. Like fourth spell level, I, right? And Greece is Greece's second spell level. Crazy, it's crazy good for I, its level. Yeah, but you, Greece does the same thing. You just put the grease on yourself, and you're good to go. I mean, sure, it takes an extra action or whatever, but <laughs> I mean, well, yeah. I mean, freedom of movement takes an action to cast too. It, it well, it, Greece would take an action to cast, but the grease goes on the ground. Then you have to put it on yourself. Then you have to. <laughs> then you have to roll it. You could something. just have actually. You could just have grease with you for that purpose, but you probably get attacked by a bear or something. Yeah, or like a jar of mayonnaise or something. Yeah, or a jar of mayonnaise would work. Oh, that would work. Um, <laughs> so scrying and legend lore. I, okay. Um, yeah. But then, a- all right. So I'm I'm seeing some of the other stuff, and I think I get where this is going. Right. Right. So you get premonitions. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, you get you get proficiency in perception and insight. Right. Um, this so, feels like a fortune teller. Yes. So, 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 but like a cursed fortune teller. Um, so far, rogues are, I think, the only class that usually gets like extra bonus action stuff Mm -hmm. because they can disengage, dash, and hide as a bonus action. I think maybe, yes, they can hide as a bonus action. Um, this subclass can uh, dash, disengage, help, and search as a bonus action. Um, and with even with no armor, your AC is thirteen plus your Dex modifier. But okay. That, it, right. So that's like that's like you have insight, flashes, glimpses into the future, right? Mm-hmm. So that that makes sense so far. Yep. You are an omen seeker. So at sixth level, uh, you learn augury. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't count against the spells that you know, and you can cast it at will without expending a spell slot. You can also cast it as an action instead, um, and you can do that an equal number of times as your charisma modifier. Oh, cool. So augury is not a super strong spell, so I think that's perfectly fine. Yeah. Um, it's like you cast lock you cast bones or something like that and it tells you something and it has like a a percentage to fail and i and like every time you use it for the same thing or maybe even every time you use it that day um the percentage that it will give you a a a, um either opposite or incorrect reading gets higher and higher Mm -hmm. um and then also uh, you can pull out the strings of fate, uh, and you get karma. Okay, this is where it gets a little bit complicated, which we don't like that usually. So it adds an extra little thing to keep track of. Mm-hmm. Um, so as a reaction, if you roll an ability check, an attack roll, or a saving throw, you can expend some of your karma to force a targeted creature to add or subtract the number of karma you spent on their roll. Oh, I'm sorry. If a creature within 30 feet of you rolls an ability check, attack, roll, or saving throw, then that's when you do that. Mm, okay. So you reduce their roll by a certain amount. So I like that as, as a mechanic. I do think it is hard to keep track of. Right. And it's... It could be potentially annoying for somebody to be sitting there like... Do I do two or three? Do I do two or three? Like, all right, yeah. Uh, basically, 
either that or here's the other thing it could be it could turn into like if if you i guess if you've already seen the role um which probably this implies that you have you can do it after you see the rolled number but before the results have been determined okay so you see the roll uh, on an attack roll, for instance, you could lower somebody's attack roll so someone doesn't get hit. That's pretty powerful. The only problem is then that it is, it's just all about, do I have enough points? If so, yeah, I'll reduce it. If not, then no, I won't reduce it. You know, um, there's not really like a, any risk or reward to it. I, I mean, there's a reward to it. And I guess there's a risk to using it, which is you won't have it later. but. I feel like superiority die would be a little bit better in this case, where you give them a certain number of D4, D6, D8, whatever it ends up being, and you can roll that, and you can expend those. And you roll them rather than just taking the number. I say that because I have dice. Yeah, you've got a ton of I have so many dice. Um, So I can use my dice as a counter, I can have, you know, 15 superiority dice and then be like, all right, these are expended. I'll put them over in the expended pile with whatever these are. <laughs> Oops. I've been wondering about those. Yeah, me too. I, don't, I didn't want to move them, but now I did by accident. So it's too late. Oh, man. They're <laughs> moved. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how much trouble I'm in now, but we'll see. Uh, nobody tell my wife. Anyway. <laughs> Though, then again. Mm-hmm. Uh, keeping track of karmic points or whatever isn't really much different. It's not that bad than than keeping track of like key points, right? Or sorcery points. But that's that's why I like the dice, though. Um, and I don't like key points, and I don't like sorcery points, right? Because uh, I I want a physical counter. That's a thing that you can reset. Because I hate using an eraser. Erasers suck. Yeah. 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 Having to erase stuff is tough. There are a lot of ways. uh, Well, I guess that you're still erasing things, but. Well, plus I want to be able to write in pen. Oh, write in pen. But, but you really can't when you're using a physical character sheet. Let's be real. No, pen is a bad idea. Pen's a bad idea. You know, some people, some people will put like a sheet protector over their character sheet and write on it with dry erase marker Mm -hmm. or wet erase marker. Or regular, like, Sharpie. Which you like, can then dry erase over and erase it. Right, exactly. Which is a little bit, it, it stands up to the weathering of carrying it around all the time. Yeah. A little bit better. Um, uh, anyway, though, I, I, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of resetting the points and stuff. I'd rather just have the dice. But that's, again, that's me speaking as somebody who has so many dice that that's suddenly easier. If you have one set of dice, that's harder to keep track of because now it's an abstract thing. Whereas it's actually supposed to be a physical, like you have these eight dice in front of you. Now it's an abstract thing and you're not sure if you write it on your character sheet or if you just remember it or what. Yeah, it's probably too much to think about. And I think we thought about it too much. No. Oh, you're right. You're right. Nah. On this show? No. All right. Yeah. yeah. What's up next? What okay. else do they do? So you can also get more glimpses into the future at level 10. Um, whenever you cast Augury, you can now increase the casting time to an hour uh, to modify the information you gain. Uh, you can ask a single yes or no question, and at the end of the uh, casting, you receive an answer. Uh, the po- possible answers are yes, no, yes, and no, or nothing if the spell is somehow being blocked. Uh, when cast in this way, the spell still has the normal cumulative 25% chance that you will get a random reading. Um, so it's a little bit more specific, I guess. Yeah. Augury becomes more specific um, if you do that. Um, and then at 14th level, you gain the ability to f- fully change the flow of fate. Um, so whenever someone within 30 feet of you rolls a 1 or a 20 on a d20, uh, you can use your reaction to invert the result, causing the 1 to become a 20 or for the 20 to become a 1. Mm-hmm. The targeted creature is forced to take the result created by this feature. 
What hit dice do warlocks have? Ah, I don't know. I think it's eight. I think it's D eight. Hmm. Most. Yeah, yeah, they might be. Mo yeah. Most are D six or D eight. I mean, with this with this build, you're gonna need you're gonna need to be a little tanky. So you're gonna need some constitution, because because <clears throat> it sounds like it's most useful if you are somewhere where your allies and enemies are within thirty feet of you. That's where you're most useful in combat. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, so you gotta this, be right this, in there. you're gonna have to be in the fray. It does give you a good deck or a good uh, AC bonus because that's what I'm saying. Yeah, they they thought of this. Yeah, thirteen plus your dex is pretty good. Mm -hmm. If you can get a decent dex score, depends yep. on how you roll your character, but getting up having a nice, uh, nice 16, 17 AC, maybe. Well, I mean, I, I probably with me, I would have 18 AC to start with because I always roll only 20s. <clears throat> yeah, just straight 20s, straight 20s across the board. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's all technique. It's not like, Right. There's a strategy. There's luck to it for some people, but like you, physics is deterministic. Let's be real. You have to you have to like go to roll the dice, but then you just sort of like place them down where you want them to be. Yeah. And the more carefully you place them, the better it works, obviously. <laughs> right. It, it's a strategy. Yeah. Where you just sort of set the dice down. I mean, that's how I've won all of the uh, encounters, you know, that I've ever, ever, ever been in. I just set the dice where I want them to be. What do you think? Do you want to do just one more or, or do you want to see two more? <laughs> All right. So no, no, no. We got to talk about the dice thing more because it's really restraint, isn't it? It's really restraint because rolling the dice is so fun. <laughs> yeah. But to, to win, which is the only thing that matters. You're right. Obviously. You need to, you need to rein yourself in mm -hmm. and place the dice down. Right. Which is not as fun. No, but winning isn't as fun. Yeah, winning shouldn't be fun. That's the thing that people don't understand <laughs> is that winning is not like it's inversely related to fun. Yeah, things aren't sunshine and rainbows. If you want to have fun, you better be prepared to have a terrible, miserable time. That's the only way to have fun. Right. It, that's exactly it. The, the, the more of a chore something is, the more likely it is, it is that it will to, be fun. Th that it will be fun, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was fun. Let's keep going. <laughs> okay. uh, we, we got, uh, we have time. Let's do, give me the spookiest one you've got. Okay, the spookiest one I've got. Um, this is a list of evil spells that bad guys might have. Um, this is from Humble Chronicler. Um, right, right, well. right. He's a Bionicle fan. I got it. Yep, humble chronicler. Yeah. I don't so, know if he or she. I, I don't care which what you are. You can be anything you want. These spells. But yeah, we'll say, yeah. Mm -hmm. if you are a Bionicle fan, I got you. I called you out on it right here. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. I recognized it. Chronicle Bionicle. Well, I, I mean that that is kind of where the name. But no, there's a character in Bionicle who it's is called the, Chronicle. Is, is the chronicler he's the is there chronicler. that's his title he, is he humble mm, he's less humble and more like uh anxious <laughs> he's anxious yeah okay cool yeah hey these spells are in alphabetical order mm -hmm. just so you know okay uh so there's a fourth level evocation spell called hellfire Rain. Oh, oh okay I thought you were just going <laughs> to zap. I was going to be like, ah, oh, there's just one, huh? Uh, yeah, oh, cool. All no, right, what's all, it called? They'll just start with Z. That was Z-A. So there's a lot. Wait till we get to zip. And zipe, but spelled with a Y. <laughs> all right. Uh, okay. The range is 120 feet. Ooh, boy. Uh, but it has a material component uh, you need a vial of blood from a humanoid that has been killed within the past 24 hours, which the spell consumes. So it's something that you actually do need. Hey, I just want to say, I, mm -hmm. I said this when we played, actually played D&D &D last night. 
Um, I I never knew what spellcasting focus foci were for previously. I never I never understood. Like I thought that maybe you needed them to cast spells. Turns out they replace the need for material components, except for material components that are consumed. Mm-hmm. So if you have a spellcasting focus, you don't need components to cast spells, even ones that require material components, unless they're consumed. Right. Or have a cost right. associated with them. Anyway, that was a, a tangent. <clears throat> so blood-like acid rain <laughs> falls in a 30-foot tall cylinder with a 30-foot radius centered on a point you choose within range. Each creature within the area makes a constitution saving throw. The creature takes 4d6 fire damage plus 4d4 acid damage on a failed save or half as much on a successful one. Uh, If you cast this spell while on any layer of hell, then you don't require material components at all. Oh. And when you cast it at higher levels, 5th level or higher, uh, the fire damage increases by 1d6 and the acid damage by 1d4 for every spell slot above the fourth. Okay, so it's a pretty strong, very large spell. Yeah, the fact that it's an area and does so much damage. Yeah. That's pretty insane. Yeah. Better have a rogue in your party who can use um what is that what is that ability? Uh uh cu- cunning nope. Uh 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 du- uncanny dodge there we go where if they save a saving is if they make a saving deck saving throw then they take zero damage yeah and if they don't then they take half damage automatically that's a good one yeah uh so but Mm. but now that spells pretty good can you remind me was was the blood from someone who has died within the last 24 hours was that it or just was killed was killed yes okay i'll I'll just say who died in the last 24 hours just to simplify. Uh, Cause I think uh, it's not clear how the universe would determine who was killed or who died. So we can be a little lenient. I mean, we could be a little le- lenient, but if they uh, fell out of a tree stand and it wasn't sabotage, then, then they just died, man. Yeah, but did they? Yeah, man. They did done died. The universe doesn't know that, though. <laughs> the universe doesn't know that? No. I, I would say, I, like me personally, I would allow it to be anyone who was killed within the, or sorry, who has died within the last 24 hours. But, I mean, it's obvious what that setup is going to be. You know, like to, to use it, you're going to kill someone and take their blood and use that yeah so yeah that's a good spell for a bad guy yeah and at a high level at a for a high level adventuring party Mm -hmm. you just kill one of your friends and then the cleric resurrects them and then we're good or if they fall out of a tree and it lasts 24 hours so you could even sleep afterwards and then they're they're good to go yep perfect that is not a bad plan (laughs) That's pretty good damage. Um, yeah, it, it 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 has the same sort of feeling as um, meteor swarm, but fire and acid instead of fire and bludgeoning. Mm-hmm. Okay, the next one is a second level abjuration called infernal intervention. Um, you use a reaction to cast this. Uh, you use a reaction to cast this when you make a saving throw. To, to take half damage. This is very specific. So you call upon a fiendish deity to protect you against the danger, and you roll 2d4 and add the result to your saving throw. And then until the start of your next turn, you have resistance to fire damage and one additional damage type chosen from the following. Acid, cold, lightning, necrotic, or poison. These resistances count against the trigger, triggering damage as well. So this does a lot of stuff. Yeah. Actually. I lost it kind of there. 
<laughs> so you roll 2d4. Yeah. You add that number to your saving throw that you're making. Because okay. this, re- this is a reaction you only take when you make a saving throw. It's specifically a saving throw that is against something where if you save against it, you would take half damage. Because not every saving throw is like that. Sometimes if you make the saving throw, the spell just doesn't work. Yeah, or there are other things where, like, if you make a dexterity saving throw, you don't get something knocked out of your hand. Right, exactly. Or things like that. Exactly. So this is a very specific set of circumstances. But then you have resistance to fire and another damage type until the start of your next turn. So this is very useful if you just took your turn and then something makes you do a saving throw. Because then anything else that attacks you, you'll have resistance against that damage type until your turn starts again. Yeah. Yep, exactly. This is for if there are multiple enemies who are attacking with elemental damage. And there you go. All right. I like that. Cool. Um, Mortify, which is a fifth level enchantment and requires concentration. The range is 30 feet. Hey, um, you attempt to instill fear and evoke dread in one creature that you can see within range. Constructs and an undead are immune. Um, they make an intelligent saving throw or become mm-hmm. frightened until the spell ends. Mm-hmm. Um, but while they're frightened, their proficiency bonus is halved, rounded down. And the first time that they take damage, they take an extra 2d6 psychic damage. So it's, yeah, mortify. It's it's like cause fear, but a little bit worse. <laughs> well, okay, so one thing that would make it not worse than cause fear would be if that psychic damage was automatic. Instead of the first time that they take damage after it. That would make it pretty good, I think. Yeah, well, cause fear literally just puts the fear condition in something yeah in a creature this does that Mm -hmm. and does extra damage when you're saying worse you mean worse for the the person it's being used on yes oh i thought you meant worse as a spell like less useful no this is way more useful okay yeah yeah okay (laughs) i was a little concerned you were like we could this guy this guy i don't uh, don't know how to make you happy man (laughs) this Um, guy wants to to just cause fear that's well i I do i kind of stand what what, by what i said though because i don't know i would just forget about the psychic damage it's just begging for me to forget it it's (laughs) bad you're asking me to forget about the psychic damage all right because like each turn like each like person's turn Mm mm-hmm or monster's turn is going to be like probably 20 to 30 minutes <laughs> each. Yeah. Yeah. So on the first one, I'll probably remember the psychic damage mm-hmm. 20 minutes later. I probably will still remember it, but then there's going to be a player's turn in between and I won't have to think about it. And now we're talking 80 minutes from when I cast the spell. You think I'm going to remember that psychic damage on that that third monster? No. Now it just says whenever they take damage. So if they fall off like a ledge or something and fall 10 feet down, they'll take that extra psychic damage then too. That's true. Oh, oh, so no, 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 wait. That's even worse. Because now I actually have to be thinking about this, not on the monster's turns, but on <laughs> my allies' turns. Yeah, all, all turns. When I'm already like I'm already using my allies' turn to think about my next turn. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Yeah, you, you you should you should have to keep track and think of at least six or seven different things during combat at all yeah. times. Now, so let's talk about ways to alleviate this. Can we do that? Okay. Can we do that? Sure. Um. All right. Let's say you're playing uh with minifigures. Minifig is that what they call it? Miniatures. Mi- miniatures, yeah. Minifigures is the Lego ones. You could use either. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh what I would say is just put like a conditional marker on them. 
and tell everybody what that conditional marker means mm -hmm. and hope that all of the players on the table or around the table are, are diligent with conditional markers and are taking them into account on each attack. So when the monster gets hit, they see the conditional mar marker on the monster and go there. That's going to be that 2d6 psychic damage, please. And you roll that. We got one. Boom. Bada bing, bada boom. Yeah, those little ring things are pretty useful. Yeah. So next up is you're playing on a digital tabletop. Yep. Uh, pretty similar. We use roll 20, but just the free stuff. Yeah. Uh, so I'd probably put a color marker on it. Or a, you could use a conditional marker, but I'd probably put a color on it, to be honest. And just say, hey, this color, this purple, means that they can take psychic damage on their turn. Yeah, they have the ability to take psychic damage on their turn. Yeah, or no, on your t on any turn. Sorry, when they yeah. get hit. Yeah, when they get rather. hit. Rather, I keep yeah. forgetting what causes the psychic damage. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, but anyway, yeah. So then you see that when they get hit, they take the psychic damage. Everybody has to be clear of what it means. How do you keep track of that when you're playing in your brain? Um, that's what that's what I'm stuck on, and that's why I stalled by saying the other ones first. Be a genius. It doesn't work. I've I've tried. Ah, man. Darn. I am that and it's not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I am a genius and I can't figure it out. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. I mean, one way is to have like an actual uh flow chart that everybody's following on each turn. Where they like look at conditions and they do like all this stuff. Um, you could you could snap a rubber band on your wrist wh right like right when the spell is cast, and then you'll be like, "Why am I wearing a rubber band on my wrist?" Oh yeah, take two d six psychic damage. No, but I, I I think all right. Let's say this. Okay. You start your turn, mm -hmm. and you're required to list your conditions. At the beginning of your turn. You say, all right, I'm taking my turn. I am poisoned. I have two levels of exhaustion. Let's do this. <laughs> Let's get this bread. I think that something like that needs to, needs to be happening in, in a completely theater of the mind setting. Because. Well, otherwise you're going to forget. Yeah. All kinds of stuff. I mean, you're going to have to write stuff down anyway. You're going to have to write down conditions and things. Mm -hmm. But. I think that there needs to be a, a repeat, like the repeated vocalization of it. The making sure that everybody's on the same page each, each round mm -hmm. and reminding everybody of, of the things that are normally just left in the background. That's, that's important. It's like doing a table reading of a script. I don't know if it is or not. I've never done that. It's, yeah, it'll be I like, mean, I technically I have. Okay. But that doesn't <laughs> count. We were, that doesn't count. Well, we, I don't know if we did it like a table reading. I mean, we. I, what, what do you mean? Like you, you include you. You dictate. So somebody, somebody in the group is in charge of dictating the stage directions. And oh, okay. Actually, then yeah, we did it properly. That kind of stuff. That's we what, did it. Properly. That's what I mean. Yeah. So so like you. So I'm just saying like when it's your turn, you say. Uh, Daniel Storm Thunder has two levels of exhaustion. Yeah. And, ha and is under the poison condition. And I get that that's not being in character. You could do it. You could deliver the line in character. And your character is the kind of person who every six seconds says, Hey, guys, by the way, remember, I am poisoned and have two levels of exhaustion. Did I mention that? Looking at you, cleric. <laughs> <laughs> um, but at the same time, like, I would not deliver that in character, personally. Wait a what, minute, though. I do you? have some. I do have a character on deck who would, uh, d who would announce that each turn. Man, I think I talked about this on the show before, but that really makes me think of that one episode of the of the Disney Hercules animated series, where there was some demigod guy, I think, who kept following Hercules around and wanted to challenge him or something, and he would narrate everything that he did and thought out loud at all times. And and that was like a running joke. I don't remember that. It, it was a way that the show 
like it was a joke but also how the show that that like particular episode like uh delivered exposition this guy will just say stuff he's like i'm looking at this hercules man from afar and he seems to be <laughs> a formidable opponent and like sometimes he would start doing it like while around everybody else and they're like are you are you narrating yourself right now <laughs> Oh man! All right, I'm gonna have to check that and, out. And then he would like, kind of ignore them and continue to do it. It was great. It was a good joke. It was a good bit. Yeah, I think so. You should that check it out. Sounds good. Um, there's a Soul Reaper here. Uh, it's a first level transmutation spell. It's one reaction. Uh, when you make a saving throw to take half damage again, huh? This person likes this concept, I guess. So uh, you corrupt the life energy of the plant used in the spells casting. You need a plant. And is it consumed? Um, apparently, it doesn't say that it's consumed in the component section. But you can't re-corrupt somebody. Right. Um, so it twists into the shape of a scythe that appears in your hands. This person has seen Soul Reaper, I think. Uh the weapon lasts until the spell ends. It counts as a simple weapon with which you are proficient. It requires two hands to wield. Um, when you attack... Why does this... Uh, okay, I've only read like maybe half of it so far. But I do not understand why it's a reaction that you take when you're making a saving throw. Do you get an attack with it right away? So far, it doesn't make any sense. Okay. When you attack, uh, use your spell casting modifier instead of strength. It deals 1d12 necrotic damage on a hit that has reach. Whew. And in addition, uh, when you attack a celestial, you attack with advantage. Um, if you miss, uh, you lose when you miss, you lose a number of hit points equal to half your level. Whoa. Um, if you let go of the scythe, it wilts away. Thereafter, while the spell persists, you can use a bonus action to cause the scythe to reappear in your hands. I think they messed up when they put that this is a you cast it as a reaction i so potentially but it's also too powerful of a spell to give to somebody as a first level spell uh it, yeah because it's too strong of a, of, of a weapon although there is some risk involved but, but you're only level three when you get a first level spell i think right spell slots uh i think you get for, that level three or level two it depends on your class. Yeah. So so um, anyway, you you're you know, a little baby, your level rounds down to one, and, or you know half your level rounds down to one, or zero depending on when you get that spell, mm -hmm. and uh, you can hit D twelve damage. D twelve damage. Yeah. D twelve damage is is necrotic little, even. Yeah. Which is pretty pretty and you know pretty useful sometimes. And and don't forget that when you cast the spell using third or fourth level, the damage increases to two d twelve, and fifth or sixth level that's three d twelve, and then seventh level or higher it's four d twelve. Yeah, so that's pretty strong for a thing that you can do repeatedly like that. And uh, yeah, it's concentration up to a minute. Yeah, so. I, I guess I can see why they'd want to limit when you could trigger it. So if, if that was intentional, I get it. I think that there's another um I think there's another time that you could trigger it. Mm -hmm. Like I think that there are other ways that you could pair it with something that could be pretty cool. One would be if a creature within range receives the fear condition so you have to scare them first and then you can take out your scythe and then reap them because <laughs> um, then that gives you something that you have to do in order to take out this weapon yeah condition. but then you could just use it on every, everybody you only have to make one of them fear you um so that could be pretty cool or mm -hmm. lower the damage oh, i don't know if you can cause fear by the way with only first level spell slot so that might not be a good example but it's an example i think it might be a third level spell yeah actually. okay <laughs> but it, but if you made it like 1d6 but if they're afraid of you it's 1d12 or or 
you could roll to actually be able to make this light. That's dumb. That's dumb. I'm sorry I said that. Yeah, that was because you have to cast the spell either way. That's yeah. a lot of risk. Yeah. For not very much reward. I'm sorry, all. guys. I know you come to this podcast for me to not be dumb. And today I'd be dumb. <laughs> well, let's talk about the split soul, which is a sixth level necromancy spell. Uh, you lose half of your current hit points. Okay. And attempt to possess the body of one medium or small creature mm -hmm. that you can touch. Uh, note that if they are awarded by protection from evil and good or magic circle, then they can't be possessed. Um, they must make a charisma saving throw. And on a fail, your soul moves into their body. And you can possess them for up to one hour. The target gains temporary hit points equal to the hit points that you lose. On a successful save, the target resists your efforts to possess it, and you do not lose half of your current hit points. So you expend the spell slot, but you don't lose hit points. That's okay. Yes. There's also, you also need a powdered diamond worth at least 300 gold pieces, which the spell consumes. So this is, has a high cost to cast, too. Mm -hmm. So what happens to you? Your body, is it like, a, is it like an Eno kind of thing where... Your body now just doesn't have yes, just slumpy. anything in it and just falls over. Mm -hmm. like a, or is it a Shikamaru situation? Where they copy your movements? Yeah. Maybe. Both bodies do the same thing. You have to beat both levels with the same button presses. <laughs> both levels, same inputs. Yeah. Yeah. Th there are some... Which game is it? Super Mario World is one of them where uh, one of the tool assisted speed runs is all levels same inputs oh really yeah and i think i remember seeing a video of them all happening simultaneously uh or it's like each world is the same inputs maybe that would make more sense in a video form oh my goodness there's the third page and there's a lot more to that spell anyway continue oh there's more to that spell yes <laughs> oh okay i didn't even read half of it yet Oh, okay. Keep going. Oh, my goodness. Okay, while well, you possess a creature in this way, your own body falls into a catatonic state. Oh. Ah. Um, if we could read, we would have known. Yeah, we would have known. So you lose access to all of your own racial traits, class features, and equipment. In addition, your own body is unconscious. Your game statistics are replaced by the target statistics. Uh, you retain your alignment, your intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. Uh, you act on their turn. And you control them. You have access to any and all of its racial traits, class, features, and equipment, except for legendary resistances, legendary actions, or layer actions. I have one problem with this. Okay. You should act on your own turn still, not on theirs. Anyway, let's keep going. Mm -hmm, because you could possess them and then immediately take a turn again. <laughs> if their initiative was right after you. That's true. Uh, that, and that's probably why, like mechanically, it probably does make more sense to take their turn. Because, like, that would be a good advantage to get for sacrificing 300 gold and half your hit points when you get back to your own body. So. Very true. Very true. Now, while you're possessing the body, you can use your action to return to your own body as long as it was within 90 feet of you. Uh, you regain a number of hit points equal to the target's remaining temporary hit points. Mm -hmm. And the target... Uh, loses all of its temporary hit points. Okay, now read really fast because all I need to know is what happens if your body dies before the spell's duration ends. Okay, uh, if the target drops to zero temporary hit points while being possessed, you immediately return to your own body if it's within 90 feet of you. Otherwise, you must make a charisma saving throw. On a failed save, you return to your body, you lose half of your current hit points. On a successful save, you return to your body without losing any hit points. If the spell ends, your soul immediately returns to your own body. If your body is dead... Mm -hmm. When you attempt to return to yeah, it, this is what I need to know. Uh, you are, you you become instead unconscious with two failed death saves. Oh, so you do go back to your body. So you still and it becomes go back. unconscious with two failed death saves. Right. So it which, doesn't. Yeah. So hmm. it, it revives you actually. Kind of. Which which it makes brings you back to life. Because if my soul's not even in my body anymore, and my body gets stabbed. I'm not dead yet. Technically. 
with the way that souls work in D and D, yeah, like yeah. they haven't injured that part of you, right? But when I go back to my body, my body has been stabbed, and your soul is going to be like, "Hey, we're leaking." Yeah, we leaking. <laughs> we got to bail hey, out this call plumber. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, yeah, we'll call a plumber. Um, his name is Chris Pratt. <laughs> uh, okay, there's one more. Um, oh yeah, this one's called Wither Being, third level necromancy spell. Mm. Uh, so you attempt to afflict a humanoid that you can touch with a disease. You must make a Constitution saving throw on a failure. They contract the disease and they are poisoned for the spell's duration. Uh, on a successful save, they are not affected at all. A creature poisoned by the spell makes a constitution saving throw at the end of its turn. Mm -hmm. If it fails a save, um, its current maximum hit points are reduced by 2d6. The reduction lasts until they finish a short or long rest. Uh, if it succeeds, the spell ends. If the spell reduces the target to zero hit points, it dies, and the body is reduced to a pile of rotten remains. Ew. Yeah. A uh, rotten creature can be restored to life only by means of a fifth level spell or higher, such as raise dead. Can you compost them, though? Um, mm, well, they were diseased. Generally, you're not supposed to use diseased animals in fertilizer in composting i don't think you used animals at all in it come to think of it touche <laughs> that's true well for fertilizer but not for composting no not for fertilizer either what do you use dead things for okay anyway uh, I, I don't know you, that you do i mean you eat them you can you eat them cast the, you can cast the spell using a fourth level uh or higher and the reduction increases by 1d6 hit points for every spell slot above the third now all i can think of is gordon ramsay saying it's rotten it's rotten i've, I've eaten, eaten this, this. <laughs> so that's good for that spell what's next well, that was the last spell, but I do have another one. Another homebrew. Um, what do you think? Yeah, we got time. We got time? We got time. Okay. Uh, this comes to us from Rudocini. I think. Rudocini? R-U-D-O-C-I-N-I? -I. Unclear how you say that. Uh, this is a creature called the Chosen. It's a medium aberration. Mm -hmm. It's chaotic evil. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, hey, there was a spell back there. I forgot to say I like the um, interaction between that spell and protect from good and evil. Okay, keep going. Uh, yes. Back, back to and Rudocini. Magic, and magic circle, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, makes, it makes sense, right? Um, that was the possession one, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Okay, uh, so this guy, he's immune to psychic damage, resistant to force and cold damage, vulnerable to slashing damage. I like that. Not enough creatures are vulnerable to things. Yeah. Or immune to things. Even. What's the creature called again? The, uh, chosen. the chosen. Well, or Why? just actually it's just called chosen. Chosen. Why is it? All right. I got to know more about this thing. It is immune to being charmed, blinded, deafened, and frightened. But what's its deal? What's it like? Well, it inhabits a humanoid creature. Okay. Uh, Usually that creature is unaware. Mm -hmm. And if the humanoid dies, the chosen dies as well. They, the chosen can at any moment decide to permanently take control of the host body, which transforms it into a chosen body. Uh, the host is considered to be under the effects of a permanent suggestion spell by the chosen. So it's, it's not really like full possession, but it kind of is. Mm -hmm. so here's here's the deal it can cast sleep twice a day at third level it can cast fear three times a day it, it can cast arms of hadar 
four times a day, and Hunger of Hadar once a day. I haven't heard of those two. Oh, you don't know those last two? Nope. Um, they're like void type spells where an eldritch horror comes out of the void and attacks in some way. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Um, the chosen's appearance makes it, uh, take a toll on anyone directly looking at it. So any creature that attacks the chosen can, can choose to make the attack a disadvantage. Um, but if they don't, and they look at it, they take 1d6 psychic damage. Halved because of my new armor. <laughs> yes, Liam in our campaign has ar an armor of resistance and his resistance. <laughs> well, he has four damage. armors of resistance because no one else can wear them. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and he can choose <laughs> as long as he has 10 minutes of time. <laughs> but I think he'll mostly wear the one he's got on because it makes his brain feel better. It does make and his brain And the more his better. brain works, the better he feels generally. Uh, the starry darkness under the creature's hood creates an aura of unease. Creatures with it, this, I thought, was the most interesting part. Creatures with intelligence of 16 and higher are under the effect of the Bane spell within 30 feet of the Chosen. So basically, if you're smart enough, when you look into this creature, you suddenly comprehend the, like, you, you, you have comprehension of higher understanding and my stupidity is my greatest strength <laughs> yeah basically and if you're dumb you're like what i don't get it <laughs> well i can't read i can't read um so it has three actions uh nightmares it touches a sleeping creature and plays it with nightmares the creature takes 3d8 psychic damage and the chosen restores 1d6 hit points uh, the Chosen fires a blast of hypnotic cosmic energy at a creature. It's a ranged attack. Upon uh, On a hit, the creature makes a DC 14 constitution saving throw. Uh, on a failure, they fall asleep for two rounds. Or they have tentacles. Okay, so they can put you to sleep. And then they use Nightmare, which is a classic Pokemon combo. Uh -huh. But that's that would be like uh it would be, you know, put them to sleep and use Dream Eater. Although Nightmare is a Pokemon move now, I believe. Yeah. Um, so you could you could make them fall asleep and then and then do the nightmare. Yeah. Three D eight psychic is pretty pretty big. Mm -hmm. But it's a combo, so it deserves the extra damage. So I like that. Absolutely. If you look at the artwork too, it's pretty interesting. It's like a guy in a cloak. And inside the cloak is in it, the infinite cosmic expanse. Th this is like this is like a, a concept of a. Of oh, a really... ow! That did damage to me. Uh, uh, sorry, I forgot that did. Oh. Uh, that I definitely took some damage there. Oh, did you? <laughs> For All sure. right, that would be pretty fun if your character like acts like they're the smartest, <laughs> but they have a twelve intelligence or ten intelligence or something, and and the other character is like, ah, oh, oh, it hurts, and then your character is like. They, like, they have high enough charisma to like catch on and be like, oh, yeah, ah, it hurts. Ooh, ooh boy, that hurts my head. Man, ooh, that's tough. Ouch. <laughs> you guys, but they look at it and they're just like, I don't get it. I don't understand <laughs> what's going on here. You, they get to the astral sea, and in the, on the astral plane, um, you, your movement speed is based on your intelligence modifier. Uh, <laughs> you get to the astral sea, and they're like way slower than everybody else. And uh, you're like, no, I'm just taking my time. No, We're good. You're, you're the, We're good. Yeah, yeah. They're like, why are you guys in such a hurry? Pace yourself. You you guys, you guys don't know about this, but you're going to tire out. You're going to tire out if you keep going like that. Somebody with high enough charisma, though. That's, <laughs> that's exactly who would pull that off. Yeah, they would pull that off. Oh, my. I, I would want that character to be the one who starts the quest for everybody and is like, hey, we got to go do this. <laughs> but it's just totally bogus. Yeah. It's like they it's just so, made it up. Yeah, it's they like, straight up like none of it's real. Wait, this is definitely a sorcerer who tells everybody that he's a wizard. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> What a classic sorcerer move. <laughs> he like carries around a book and everything. And he's like, like, he, like constantly like flipping through it. Like, yeah, all right. Mm -hmm, he like mm -hmm. scribbles stuff. It's all nonsense. Like it doesn't mean anything. 
<laughs> That's a great character idea. That's a super fun character idea. <laughs> You know what, though? Now that you're saying this to me, I'm kind of feeling like that is you. That is me? That's you. Okay. Like, like for real right now. Oh. But Carly's character in the campaign is that. And right now you're trying to, like, feed me the narrative of, like, Carly's character is not that. You're trying to throw <laughs> me off the scent by giving me this idea. Uh-huh. I think that's what's going on right now. But but in a different way, Car- Carly is has been very clear that her character is a sorcerer. What if it? What if she's not? Oh, you're saying her character is a wizard? Yeah, who is smart enough <laughs> smart. to convince <laughs> everybody that, that she is a sorcerer? Yeah, that's something a wizard would do for sure. Have you ever Have you ever seen a wizard? <laughs> and is also subtle enough. Why do they have to wear such a pointy hat if their head is round? <laughs> Why they got such big book if they've got such big brain? <laughs> <laughs> you like that one? I think I like that one. Yeah, me too. So anyway, uh, happy Halloween was yesterday, everybody. Happy Halloween was yesterday. Today is uh, the start of a, a new, not a new season of this show, but a new season of holiday seasons. So get ready for the Christmas episode. Yep. Christmas episode is going to be next. What day of the week is Christmas this year? Actually, I don't know. I have no clue. Let me check. I'm going to check right now. I'm just going to look it up. I'm just look at me. I'm crazy. Maybe I already cut this. It took... <laughs> No, I'm looking it up. No, I didn't cut this. No, you didn't. You didn't cut. It's on a Sunday. No, sorry, Saturday. It's on a Saturday this year. Lame. And that means we're not releasing an episode that day. And what? 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 Uh, sorry, something just confused me. I have. There was a thing on my calendar that told me there's something on my calendar that's telling me somebody's birthday but it, oh oh i was so confused okay it was somebody's birthday somebody i know but it's one of my friend's siblings who who like i don't interact with ever like i'll see her sometimes and her birthday uh-huh was in my phone on my calendar what day is her birthday i'm not going to say but it's in okay. December. I'll say that. Is it December thirty first? No. No. Okay. Uh, but because I was, I was thinking maybe, maybe you still have my car- my calendar shared with you, and I think I've got a birthday on that. Oh, day. do you? No, no. It's a friend. Like it would be really weird if you had this person's birthday in your phone. Stranger things have happened. I guess my stranger dude. things have happened. <laughs> maybe. Anyway, I was like, why is that? I did not put this in here. It would be really strange to have for me to have put this in here myself. It was, it's her, it, her phone number is in my phone because I had to right right And, and f- she has her contact card mm-hmm. automatically sync with the calendar, I right. guess. Yep. Yep. That does happen. Oh, so uh, that was what happened right there. That was the like two seconds of me being like, uh, uh, what? That was all that was. Going what if on. she's a sorcerer? She might. All right, be. guys, we'll we'll leave you on that. She might be. We'll leave you on that one. Bye. Bye bye. I love you. I actually don't. I don't know how to make it stop recording. I have no idea how to make that. You've done it before, it to... haven't you? Me? Yeah. Mm, no. Yeah. No.